Hi there, and welcome to Wade's Workshop. May I take this opportunity to wish you all a happy and prosperous new year. So in this episode of Shed, Shed Talk, now in this episode of Shed Talk, um, we're going to be making the lathe lead screw protector that we've been threatening to make for quite some time. Um, I make a start on that. I come up with a cunning plan, as it were, and I'll show you a bit of footage of me making a start on the machining of that. Secondary to that, a um, little sort of bit of information about myself, which I haven't shared before, but I've got an interest in anything to do with engineering, really. And if you take engineering down to the very small scale, you get two watches. Um, as most of you will know, I mean, the greatest sort of watchmaking nation on Earth are going to be the Swiss. And I particularly like the Swiss watches, or I, although I do like Japanese watches, German watches, that sort of thing. Uh, the Japanese came along many moons ago, probably their most famous brand being Seiko. But anyway, if I see a watch that takes my interest or has got an interesting story behind it or a bit of history, a bit of age, or comes from a sort of period in time which I find interesting, I will, you know, I, as long as it's not ridiculously expensive, you know, I, I haven't spent a fortune on this watch collection of mine. But what I'll do is I'll show you, um, sort of week to week or episode by episode, odd watches in my collection that I find interesting. And obviously, the, you know, the mechanical aspect of a mechanical watch on the inside is, um, I haven't got the eyes for it now, but I'd love to have been, you know, uh, picked up that sort of thing many moons ago and become a watchmaker, that sort of thing. Um, tool making is just as interesting, but on a very small scale, specialist equipment, that sort of thing, um, is watchmaking. I'm doing a little repair job on a um, what I call my clunker, which is a watch I've had for oh, at least 30 years, if not longer. Um, and it's been battered about. It's been in tool rooms, workshops. I've you know been machining in it, welding with it on, all sorts. And it's had a bit of a battering in its life. Um, so I'm doing a bit of a repair job on that. I mean, the watch isn't worth a lot of money, you know, but and it is hardly worth repairing, if the truth be known. But having had it so long and worn it, you know, so for so long, it has got a certain amount of sentimental value. So, yeah, I'm going to set about and show you some of the repair work I'm doing on that and perhaps talk you through just one of my watches. So anyway, I hope you uh, enjoy this episode of Shed Talk. Let's get on with it. So what we're looking to do is cover this lead screw up so that Swarf doesn't get on it and we don't get wear, that sort of thing. And saves me cleaning it all the time anyway. So I've got a gap here of pretty much if I wind the carriage right back about 280 mil and I'd like the cover to go up inside there a little bit so I'm calling it 300 mil and again when the carriage is right forward it covers about 55 millimeters so I need something to cover up the lead screw that will go out on the outside that will extend from a closed size of 55 millimeters or a bit more it'll go down underneath the uh, carriage to at least 300 mil so something telescopic to go on here now i'm sure you've all seen these scrolled spring um sort of spring steel lead screw covers that you can buy and yes i could have gone out and bought myself one of those but like it to do things the way i do make your own rather than go out and buy it um i come up with a plan and what i'm going to do is make a telescopic set of shall we call them top hats that all slide inside each other like russian dolls as it were that will be attached at both ends hard fixed here clamped on here as the carriage go each top hat will progressively push inside the next one or they may all go at a at the same rate so to speak um, will collapse the lead screw cover uh keeping my lead screw clean at all times so i've got a little sketch and as you can see a series of sort of top hat units each one sliding inside the other progressively should do the job and i've also come up with a sketch uh, that's the one that's correct you can see i had several attempts at the different diameters um you know that, that's how it's going to work and basically that's my setup and sizes so i'll go on and show you the machining of these top hats i bought a piece of Delrin bar, 40 mil diameter, 750 mil long, uh, a few weeks ago, specifically with this job in mind. Um, Delrin, I actually 
it's actually called a cetal bar. It's not nylon. It's a Delrin material. I think Delrin was a brand. Um, I could be wrong on that, but I think the actual material is a cetal. It's a type of plastic. It's pretty good for general machining work. And it's a lot nicer to machine than nylon bar would be. It's not so stringy when you're machining it. Um, so if you've got any jobs that need to be made out of plastic, rather than going for nylon, this stuff's, you know, much easier to machine. It's not so stringy when you machine. It doesn't come off in great big long strands and wrap up everywhere. Or nowhere near as bad as nylon. So yeah, that's a Cetal or Delrin bar. So we're going to make these top hats out of Delrin. So I've just marked out an area now. I'm going to cut off enough for the first three. So I'm going to give myself five mil extra. They're 55 mil long each. Um, so I've allowed 60 mil each. So 180 mil. So I've just marked out a line 180 mil to cut it off. Now, little known fact about Delrin, it's really, really badly allergic to graphite. So if I draw a pencil line where I want to cut it off, being very careful, I've masked either side of the line because I don't want this, uh, this graphite to bleed out into the rest of the Delrin. I need to leave that for three minutes. So we'll come back in, oops, kick the camera, right? We'll come back in three minutes and see what happens. So yeah, that's about three minutes now. And pretty much, if I hold that side firmly in one hand and use magic, off it comes. Yeah, all right, I was kidding. I had sorted it off. But as you can see, it only takes moments to hack sort through. We put a piece of bar up in the chuck as I say, it's only 180 mil long. I can't go much longer in this lathe. Well, I can go longer, but uh, not easily. Running fairly true. I've taken the chuck up. I'm just going to gently centre drill a hole in the end. With all of these uh, top hats, should we call them. They all have a bore through the centre of them. And the smallest one being like a, a mil clearance on the lead screw. Here we are. And there we have a centre drilled hole that I've gone too deep on. <laughs> It'll do for what I'm doing. So moving on, I'll get a centre in there and we'll start machining the outside. Got a centre up in there. I'm actually in low gear on this lathe at the moment. Let me just uh, Double check that my chuck is tight because it is a soft material. Give it a good squeeze, we don't want it jumping out on us. Right. So, with it being plastic, I'm running a lot faster than I normally would on, uh, well, not much faster than aluminium really, but uh, soft materials tend to use higher speeds. I'll just set my DRO on the end there to zero. Um, this is going to make the first three top hats. And looking back to my little chart, which is my chart, which we saw earlier, there we are. The biggest diameter of the third smallest, shall we say, <laughs> is 29 mil. So this is 40 mil bar. I'm going to turn it down to 30 mil, rub it down to 30 mil back as far as, uh, you know, close to the shop. So, now, here we are, it's a good touch off. What I'll do, I'm going to take two mil side off in one cut and watch how easy this machines. So I'll take your 4mm off the diameter in one go there. I'll stop the cut, uh, come in close to where the tool is and show you how the, uh, how the swap is coming off at the moment. Now this swap is fairly brittle, it will snap off um, a lot easier than nylon would. Nylon will do long stringy bits and will probably be spraying up way up over here over the top of the uh, over the top of the post. So yeah I mean it is it, it is a lot better to machine. 
it doesn't deflect away from the tool or rump or you know it's not as uh, not as nasty as nylon as I'm getting towards the chuck I'll just pull that out and as you can see it's it's quite brittle stuff it's not as uh, stringy as nylon let's just get that out of the way and the service finish there absolutely superb okay let's finish this off I've probably gone out of shot there have I? yeah I have <laughs> Let's give you a better look. Bring you out a bit. Well, as you can see, I've machined that back now. Two minutes side off it. Happy days. Should be about 38 mil. No, 36 mil. <laughs> I'll bring it to four on my DRO and do the same cut again. Note to self, don't touch the jaws with the end of your brush. <laughs> I think that'll be going in the outtake. Don't be tempted to grab hold of this stuff. Because it, it is quite tough, even though it does it's not as uh, it is a, a bit more brittle than uh, nylon. But if it does snag. It'll drag you straight in and cause all sorts. Rip your hand to pieces. Just keep in the way from this in case it drags. Keeping my hands out of the way of any swarf that's lying around. You knock that off there. Yeah, you see, if it drags the swarf in, that's anywhere near it, maybe around your hands or what have you, it'll pull you hand in with it. Same as steel or uh, aluminium swarm. So anyway, I give it a measure and I'll take it aside. I just noticed we have some little foreign objects on the lens of my camera. Here, 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 here. Lens clean and put my finishing cut on for that down to 30mm. That's better. I just use one of these little uh, alcohol spectacles cleaning wipes. Um, actually, there's a point. I could do my glasses while I'm at it. <laughs> exactly the same thing. Just cleans any muck off the lens and what have you. But, uh, especially when I'm in sort of around the chuck, it can flick up and put tiny droplets of oil, what have you, that's flicking off the chuck onto the lens. And the reason I got oil on my chuck is because it's been left for a few weeks and I do put a film of oil and rub my hand over the chuck to stop it rusting in the shed. And I've given it a wipe down since I came back out, you know, ready to ready to start work. But it does, obviously, little bits will come out and come flicking out and hit the camera lens. So yeah, okay. <laughs> Last 0.8 millimetres. So I'll just start this up. Oh, hold on. I think we have a helicopter flying over the top. Oh well, shave my one outside, I might have caught it. Shall we try that again? Right, we'll just start this up and take the last point four mil. That's point two, oh, point four mil uh, aside, point eight to come off. So that's it. Now I'm going to get a very fine swarf now, which could go all over the place. Um, we'll see. Finishing cut down to 30 mil. Then I'm going to do the outer detail of the first part and then part it off. And we do the inside by holding on the outside afterwards. Yeah, swarf's not too bad. Just drop it down underneath. It'll probably get caught up on the chuck when I get up there. Just move the camera out of the way. You watch the swarf get caught right at the end. 
There you go. Standing back, hence why I moved the camera out of the way. Lid catches on the truck, you'll click up all over the camera. And I got away with it. Okay. See, it's uh, quite a nice finish on there, a nice size. Thirty point oh three to thirty point oh five. We'll call that around thirty mil. Set my DRO. So the largest OD of my smallest one is. 21 millimeters okay so I'll give myself a zero on the end there on the DRO and I need to turn it down to 21 millimeters over let's say I don't know 60 mil on so if that's a 30 mil two mil aside again That should take me to 26 diameter. I'll run that along, 60 mil, and then I cut off. Just taking the reading straight off my DRO here. Go. Uh, what did I say? That'll be 26. So, and I want 21. Take another two. There. This is going to be the smallest of the top hat sections of the telescopic lead screw cover. My plan being, I'm going to show you the machining of the first one. Um, show you some dimensions and how I've worked out what I'm doing. And then probably skip the middle ones and show you the end one. Because it's pretty repetitive, just different sizes. So that'll be 8 mil off, that should be 22 mil. I'm going to take a... Hold on, let me just double check myself. Stop the chuck. Now, I'm not worried about using my hands on this stuff because it isn't sharp like a metal torque would be. 21.9. 0.45 aside. Okay. Twenty one point zero four. We'll live with that. Um, okay, so that size there is let's just check you can see this on my camera. Uh, not really. Anyway, this diameter here is the the brim of the hat diameter, shall we call it? I shall show you against the drawing when I cut it off. For the smallest of the pieces. I'm going to face the end very carefully because I'm stuck out such a long way and give myself a zero. I'll just knock the speed down. I've got no centre in here now remember. I'm just going to tickle along that front face. Here we are. That was it. Give myself a zero on the DRO. Put the centre back in. So my next step is going to be over a length of 53mm 
I want to turn this diameter to 20. So there's not much off it. <coughs> I'm just going to touch. Tell you what. Let's get that little bit of swarf out of the way so I can see where I am. My previous zero. That was 21, was it not? So I want 0.5 aside. I've got 0.52 on my DRO just to get close to that 20 because that was a little bit larger. But anyway, um, my flange height on the end of the 55mm long overall is 2mm, so I need to go 53mm back now from where I've just placed for my zero. Got to turn the speed back up. <laughs> One to two, fifty two point eight. Fifty three. Let me see if I can just verify that. Looks about right on the rule. I'll bring it a bit closer in a second. I'm looking for twenty mil here. 20.06 the part that runs over the top of this will be bored to size to fit and I'll have this one because it's this the inside size is the critical bits and I am milk my way up so to speak so that's the two diameters I've got a zero mark there I think what I'll do is drill it out to forget what the size is now it's got to be 16 mil is the smallest bore so I'll probably drill it out something like 14 mil and just make it a bit easier to part off I've got a slight change of plan because um, obviously it's only a small lathe by the time I put a drill chuck on and put a 14 mil drill in I won't be able to fit it because I've got a long piece of bar in without having the tailstock hanging right off the end of the lathe so for this first one I'm just going to part it off where it is I've put the parting tool up Come back from the edge, 50, I'll actually come back 56, give myself a mill for clean up afterwards. Let's just start it up, squeeze my tool up, lock the carriage, and I'm going to part that, I might have to just get him shot in a minute, most of the way off. <laughs> that was my centre coming loose. <laughs> I wondered what that noise was for a minute then. Listen, if I just wind the centre back... No, I'm not going to do it now. Anyway... I wasn't going to pat it right off because it was on the centre. And I'll just snap the last bit off. Hence why I left an extra mill. So we'll do a bit of explanation of where we are so far. So as you can see from my sketch, an overall length of 55. I've just parted that off 56. I've gone 53 mil back to the shoulder there, which is going to leave the 2 mil wide head. And my head diameter is 21, and the shank diameter is 20, so there's not much in it. So now I'm going to have to face that end off just to bring that shoulder width back to 2 mil, and then bore it out 17 mil to within 2 mil of the front, and then 16 mil through the front bit. And the 16 mil is clearance on the lead screw, which is a 15 diameter. So having said that, for this first one, and you can see I put a little star by my 17 for the size on the first one, doesn't need a recess because there's not another top hat running inside. So it can purely be drilled right through the middle 
at 16 mil once I face that to two mil thick. So we'll do that next. So I put the part back up in the chuck. Oh, just slacking my carriage off. Still locked from where I parted the uh, parted it off. And I left a mill on here, so I'll scratch half a mill off and we'll give it a measure. Just take that pip off. Really is forgiving this stuff because it's so soft. Take the arrow. Take half a mill. Just set zero again. And we'll measure the thickness of that head. We would if we could find the calipers. I'm looking for two mil. That's coming out at about 2.3. So another 0.3. there. So that gives me a 2 mil wide head. One mil bigger in diameter than the body of this part. Let's just double check that size. 2.02, we'll live with that. So I'm just going to break that edge. 45 tool. Where are we? Can't see for looking. I was using that earlier, there we are. <laughs> A little chamfer on there. Okay, so now we can drill it out to 16 mil. This particular one isn't critical because it's just clearance on the lead screw. Let me just double check my lead screw. The lead screw's measuring up at actually. I was under the impression that lead screw was 15 mil diameter, but it's actually measuring 15.8. Not to worry, I'll do 16, just over 16 mil, be fine. So we need center drill it. literally cuts like butter this stuff. I could probably go straight in with a 10 mil drill now. Oh come on. Put that away. Give yourself something around 10 mil. 11 that'll do. How sharp is that? Not very. mill drill it looks a bit sharper when you're machining this stuff um, everything has to be fairly sharp um, again I'm using carbide tips on this probably HSS tips uh, HSS tooling would be better for plastics um, but these are the uh, the ones for the aluminium which are highly polished and have got sharper clearance angles everything else so they seem to behave perfectly well as you can see, it went straight in there with a 10mm drill. No worries at all. No coolant, no nothing. Then I would travel on my tail stuff, hang on. right through the other side as usual don't grab the swarf when the chuck is spinning at least I think that's right through the other side that's just it certainly is <laughs> okay um, yeah 16 mil 